Hello, vinyl fans. We're back up in the vinyl attic, working our way through the 100 albums that must be in your collection if you care about good music and good vinyl and things that go around and the stories behind them. Um, sooner or later, we had to get to a Beach Boys album, and there are so many to pick. Obviously, things like Pet Sounds are always in there. We're trying to do the ones that are the less obvious selections, and I've had a hard time trying to figure out which Beach Boys album that I want to settle on. I own all of them on vinyl. Uh, and I have had a long history with the Beach Boys growing up in America. I have plenty of stories to tell about seeing them live, and I was trying to figure out which one. I, there's a soft spot in my heart for Holland. Uh, I, I think that's one of the great overlooked Beach Boys records with so much content in it, but I really wanted to settle on a record that I think has a lot to say about how we think about ourselves. <laughs> What, what we've settled on, or what I've settled on, is an album from 1977, The Beach Boys' Love You. An album that's been described as their punk record, their new wave record, their synth pop record. There's been all kinds of people love it or they hate it. Um, and one of the reasons I decided to pick Love You is that uh, Elliot Roberts did a really great 45-minute deep dive uh, on his channel, talking about why this record is so unique and what's, your, what's so special about it. It made me think, yeah, this is a record I really need to lift up uh, and give some attention. And, you know, 1977 is, you know, a pivotal year. I think we'll do a video just on the music of 1977. It's really a transition year. I mean, literally, it's the year that Elvis Presley dies and Elvis Costello puts out his first album and the punk movement you know, starts to take off. And so the music of 77, whether it's Saturday Night Fever or the Sex Pistols, uh, reflect an incredible shift. And this Beach Boys album is a part of that weird shift. The, uh, the album comes out in April, and the Beach Boys had sort of had somewhat of a resurgence after the Endless Summer double collection came out, which was a staple in my house. My mom owned it, the, the Endless Summer you know, fun, 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 till your daddy takes the T-Bird away, best of the Beach Boys album, put them back on the charts, put them back out on the tour, and more importantly, put Brian Wilson back out with the band. So, you know, the the story is, Pet, Pet Sounds comes out in 66, Brian starts on the Smile Project, and then just sort of loses his mind, and hands over the Beach Boys to the other members, and kind of takes, takes a back seat. And then... In 75, he gets this kind of crazy guru, psychoanalyst, therapist named Eugene Landy uh, to do this 24-hour therapy and really gets Brian out of his weird drug-induced psychosis. And he's, still, he's still a little you know, challenged by his mental health issues, as many people are, but it really brings Brian out. He comes back out on tour. They release this album, 15 Big Ones, uh, and in the anniversary of their 15th anniversary, it's kind of like covers and it's, it's not sort of the quintessential beach boys record, but the motto Brian is back was sort of out there. And all of a sudden their concerts were getting big again and they were getting a lot of attention. And, um, so they wanted to, you know, capitalize on that and let Brian kind of do his magic in the studio. And this album, The Beach Boys Love You, was originally intended as a Brian Wilson solo record. It was going to be called Brian Loves You and just turned Brian loose in the studio. And because of the sort of momentum that was built uh, in 76, the bicentennial and, you know, the, the attention that the old Beach Boys songs were getting, they decided to turn Brian Loves You into The Beach Boys Love You. And... Um, Recorded it in uh, in Santa Monica at their new brother's studio. Uh, and the, the engineer on it, uh, Earl Mankin, uh, went on to produce in that exact same studio the Runaways second album, Queens of Noise, that we talked about uh, last time. So there's all these connections here. Um, the, the record was really just a Brian Wilson record. I mean, he was just sort of left alone. Carl and Dennis would come in and help out a lot. Um, Al Hardeen was not very involved in it. Uh, Mike Love was off teaching Transcendental Meditation, which is not a bad thing. But it was really kind of a Wilson Brothers record and Brian in, in, in you know, working kind of solo, but playing all the instruments, including the drums. I mean, Dennis Wilson is 
barely even playing the drums on this record. And the difference in this is sort of, so this is the first real Brian Wilson produced Beach Boys product we get since Smile, since Smile in 67. You know, we're now 10 years later and Brian sort of left alone in the studios instead of the strings that were part of Pet Sounds and the Smile Sessions, it's a lot of Moog synthesizer. <laughs> the synthesizer comes back and it's a handy tool for him. He had these things called mini Moogs around so we could get all kinds of different sounds. And it created a sound that was sort of new to Beach Boys fans. A lot of like boopy, boopy, boopy uh, sounds that were not organic sounding. And it, I think it kind of caught some people off guard because of the harshness of it. Um, but the, um, the the themes in this record are something that I want I want to talk about um, the cover I love you know sort of the backward na nature of this so here's here's this era a lot of beards when we get to the late 60s or late 70s Beach Boys uh, the album cover was designed by Dean Torrance one of their friends of Janet Dean fame who's meant to look like a, like a Navajo blanket I don't know if it's the best cover but it, it does have this sort of nice texture to it and um the the themes are somewhat weird the songs on here uh including songs like roller skating girl and i want to pick you up <laughs> uh are sometimes a little seen as a little creepy i mean here here's this guy who's you know in his late 30s by this point singing these sort of teenage love songs to teenage girls and uh, wanting to pick her up like she's a baby and pat her on the butt. And it's just, you're, you're <laughs> you kind of wonder what's going on. Is there some type of mental breakdown? There's like a, a, a tribute to Johnny Carson on here. There's a great song called Airplane, which is my favorite track on the record. It's, I think, the only one that they ever performed live. Uh, songs about the solar system. You know, uh, this great little ditty called Ding Dang that, it, that Brian wrote with um, Roger McGuinn from The Birds. And it's it's weird. It's weird. It's weird. But uh, what it is, is someone who is in their late 30s, thinking about their early 20s and trying to recapture that thing. Because remember, uh, Endless Summer comes out and everybody's kind of going, um, you know, surf and safari, you know, the, all the old music is sort of coming back, all that nostalgia. So there's an attempt to recreate the themes of a young Brian Wilson and an old Brian Wilson has been through hell. You know, he's put on weight. He's had a cocaine habit. He's had several mental breakdowns. But he's trying to recapture this notion of his adolescence and these weird songs. And everybody sings on this record. Dennis sings a couple. Uh, Mike has, has some of his best vocal performance on this record. Brian sounds really rough. Dennis sounds really rough. Uh, so there are these older men singing these songs about the, you know, young love and it sounds weird and out of place and a little bit a little bit icky and it begs the question can we really remember our youth as it was or is it always going to be through the lens of where we are now you know when i think about when i was 20 years old i was living my life but i can't think about it as i thought about it in 1984 <laughs> This is when I was 20 years old. It's all through the mist of all the things that have happened in the in the 40 years since then. I don't really have a good grasp on what that was like. Every once in a while, you get a little feel for it, but it's it's not even. And this is just you know talking about 10 years, 10 years or 15 years prior. Um, you you really don't ever have that moment again. You see it through the lens of all the experience that's come. Back. You can't ever go back to that moment. Um, and so the record is sort of a weird, out of place feeling that when it came out, just bombed. I mean, there was an attempt to kind of create some excitement around it. I remember, I remember when it came out, Brian Wilson uh, was on Saturday Night Live. There was a great skit with uh, Dan Aykroyd and, and John Belushi. They were like dragging uh, Brian out of his bed in Malibu and taking him to the beach and saying like, you're the beach guy, get, you know, get on a surfboard and write some songs. Uh, the record didn't do very well in the U S it only made it to 53 on the album charts, had no hit singles that came from it. Uh, there was a follow up that kind of, that was completely recorded by Brian, um, called, uh, adult child, adult slash child following these themes that, um, 
because this record's stiff. They, they didn't even put it out. It's kind of like the Lost Beach Boys record. But among people uh, of the time who kind of understood the value of this weird juxtaposition, it was a hit. I mean, it got a great write-up from Lester Bangs, uh, the great record record reviewer in Circus Magazine that I remember reading because I got it because Kiss was on the cover, so I was always reading Circus Magazine. Uh, Rolling Stone, Robert Christigau at the, at the Village Vanguard wrote a kind of glowing review of it, and even Patti Smith in Hit Parader. Patti Smith, who, you know, besides being the mother of punk rock, is also a great music journalist, um, wrote a great review of it in the form of a poem. Uh, and the, uh, you know, she sort of understood that there was this childlike man named Brian Wilson who was trying to, in this messed up thing called, you know, the, the mid mid-1970s, trying to recapture the naivety and the, the innocence of his youth with modern technology like mini Moog synth synthesizers. And in this really great review that Patti Smith gives us, she, she recognizes that when she was a young kid from, from uh, New Jersey or living in New Jersey, she just did not get the Beach Boys. All that fun, 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 surf, surf and safari stuff was just, you know, a million miles away. But then when we start to age, something happens, Some, this growing and bringing things in and being a part of something bigger. And she writes so eloquently in this, this beautiful record review, as we age, we get a sense of threat. That doesn't mean when we grow up or grow old, you don't have to if you don't want to. But within the process of survival spews a seed which takes root and branches. We are limb for limb, a tree of experience, experiment, experiment, pain and fun, fun, fun. You get to the point where all the points are equal emergence, the continuum timeline. One feels a certain sporadic harmony with rude order, life as architecture, life is a dream. Some of us will move out rock. Some will disintegrate. Those dust to dust take their place as part of the golden swirl of the universe. There is a cloud of some such dust circulating like a posthumous halo above the head of this album. Brian Wilson has spun out and returned. I mean, that, that wonderful bit uh, really captures the madness of this record. How it is so strange and... Uh, some people were like, this doesn't sound like a Beach Boys record, I hate it. And other people were like, this doesn't sound like a Beach Boys record, I love it. Um, you know, the band sort of never had another moment like this again. They kind of, you know, splintered, including uh, Dennis Wilson going off and recording later in the year. This brilliant record, Pacific Ocean Blue, is it an environmental record? It's a soul record. It's certainly one of my favorite records of all time. And, um, you know, a wonderful thing to have on vinyl as well. But it, it is sort of a, uh, an addendum to this Beach Boys record that comes out in 1977. So, you know, the Beach Boys kind of, you know, moved to a different record label and they kind of tried to make it into the 80s. And they were really cashing in on the nostalgia craze. And, uh, you know, some of us are old enough to remember when... when uh, one of the Reagan administration tried to prevent them from playing at the 4th of July uh, concert on the, on the mall in Washington, D.C., and that put them back in the, in the limelight. And Brian was sort of struggling, uh, working on some solo projects, and then Dennis died, and the, sort of the, the band kind of never really regained what it, what it had sort of achieved in the 1970s as something different than the, the, surf, the surf band. Um. And they're still touring. Mike, <laughs> Mike Love and some just local local whatever guys he picked up in a bar are still touring as the Beach Boys. I don't really think it's the Beach Boys, but those records are still there. So I wanted to just I wanted to give a little love to the Beach Boys. Love you. Um, it's the strangest thing, and it is uh, it's, you know it's relatively easy to find on vinyl. You know it's been in a lot of um, used record bins since 1977. I think it went straight to straight into the goodwill bins uh so you may be able to find it it is super weird super weird super beautiful and a, and a glimpse inside the mind of a genius who is still with us we love you brian we love you the beach boys love you and we love you brian thank you for this great music all right that's this one uh next we're gonna we're gonna jump back into the world of jazz uh we're gonna do a record that was pivotal in my life we're gonna talk about 
um, uh, the, the significance of Dave Brubeck, the Dave Brubeck Quartet. That's coming up next on Vinyl Fetish. If you love this music and if you love this record and you love talking about great records, please subscribe, hit the like button, comment below about what your favorite albums are, and uh, I'd love to, to get your feedback on this. All right. This music matters. The Beach Boys matter. The Beach Boys still matter. Even Mike Love. <laughs> but Brian, we love you so much. You matter. Let's talk about it. Uh -huh. 